This is day two of our three day wireless fire alarm installation video blog. Following our first day's work which involved installing the 22 manual core point and standard back boxes to their fire stands, the next stage is to temporarily power up the hi-fi translator and the two dynamic expanders using batteries. The fire alarm is not required at this stage. The commissioning engineer then plugs his laptop to the relevant unit and can now log on the radio devices to the appropriate expander according to our design. As stated, the fire alarm panel is not required at this stage. All the logging on of the devices can be carried out either manually, which would involve setting up the devices using the onboard device dill switches, or automatically using the software and a laptop. As you can see, our engineer selected the easier option using the laptop. We unpacked all the manual core points and sanders, inserting the primary battery only. We did not insert the secondary main battery. The reason for this is the round flat CR2 battery does not have an effect on the logging on procedure and therefore can be fitted straight away. However, the larger secondary battery cannot be fitted until the device is ready to be logged on to the relevant unit, which could be either a translator or an expander. For this design, however, there are no devices on the translator. All the devices have been divided between the two expanders according to the distance from each unit. The purpose of the translator in this design is to provide the interface for the expanders back to the fire alarm control panel. Expanders do not interface directly to the fire alarm loop. This can only be achieved by the translator. The purpose of the translator in this design is to provide the interface for the expanders back to the fire alarm control panel. Expanders do not interface directly to the fire alarm detection loop. This can only be achieved via the translator. All the devices are monitored for a primary and secondary battery fault, plus a tamper fault. The purpose of the tamper fault is to register a fault at the fire alarm control panel should a detector be removed from its base or a manual core point or sounder be removed from its back box. The translators and the expanders are IP65 rated. This allows us to place the units outside if required. With this design, the expanders will be located inside the tent and the translator will be positioned outside the security porter cabin at a height of around 3 meters. To enable us to obtain the best coverage, the expanders were placed within the tent but at high level. Each expander requires 12 to 24 volt DC supply. We installed the power supplies at low level. The power supplies have a monitoring output relay. This full output is monitored by the expander. Should the primary 230 volt main supply feeding the power supply be interrupted, a fault signal will be relayed to the fire alarm control panel, informing the user of a fault. Placing the expanders at high level inside the tent provided us with a very good radio signal coverage for all the installed devices. Also, from this position, the expanders were able to pick up the signal from the translator situated outside the security porter cabin. The translator was the only device to be mounted outside. As stated, the translator is IP65 and therefore would not be affected by the elements. The unit was mounted about 3 meters high and this position was high enough to pick up the radio signals from both the expanders within the tent. We now had communication between the two expanders within the big top tent and the external translator outside the security porter cabin. The tent and the security porter cabin was now connected wirelessly.